Simple Equations with me, Andrew Gard, um, where we talk about some things that we've learned recently in our favorite programming language, R. So, Greg, uh, how you doing? Tell Good. me something that you've learned uh, learned recently. Delighted to be here. Thanks, Andrew. And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about. And the, these are very simple little tricks that I've learned, but I find them useful and I use them all the time. So can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, so I've written the code. So I'll just walk you through it very quickly. Of course, as always, I usually just start off by install, by calling the tidyverse. It brings a whole lot of extra uh, vocabulary into R and people that watch my channel and Andrew's channel, of course, will have been introduced to the tidyverse before now. It's, one, it's a lovely set of packages. I like the Star Wars... Uh, the Star Wars uh, data set. So if I just run that, you can see it's a lovely data set. You've got all the characters from Star Wars and a little bit of information okay. about each of them there. It's a lovely star, uh, data set that's built in. You've got this data set at home and you can practice what we're showing you right now. Names is a great function. You can just see what all the variable names are. And I want to look at species, right? So in the Star Wars, you've got humans and droids and other species. And if you say unique Star Wars dollar sign species, it'll tell you what all the unique like what each of the possible values in that that particular variable are, right? So we've got these are all the possible species that that exist in that variable. Now, re and that's not really what I want to show you. What I want to show you are these two things right now. Okay, if we say Star Wars, and remember the pipe operator just kind of means and then. And I know in a previous lesson, uh, Andrew, you taught us about there's a new native pipe operator. I haven't quite gotten. I haven't started using that yet. Uh, but I love it and I will. So thanks for that tip. Um, so we've st Star Wars and then. Now, select is saying which variables do we want to select? And just this is the first tip is you can change the order here. So if we started with, you can start with name, but you can put, you can list the variables in any order you want and they will then appear in your new data set in the order that you put them here, right? So you don't need to reorder things in the order that you select them. The data set will be reshuffled to reflect that order. The other thing you can do, by the way, is you can change the name of a variable while you're selecting at the same time, just in the same line of code. And that's what I've done here. So instead of saying name, comma, species, I've said name, comma, kind, equal species. And that, and what's going to happen there? And why don't I just, I'll just decrease, I'll just ask that pipe operator for now just to show you what that does. And if I go to the top of the variable... Can you see it's got, I've got two variables, name and kind. kind. This used to be species. It's changed its name and it's now called kind. And I mean like kind of, kind of uh, character. Okay, we put the pipe operator back in, we say, and then now this is the second tip that I wanted to show you guys. Filter, which, you know, filters out the rows um, within the variable kind. And, you know, this, this is quite fun because if you want to get a, a, a list a list of uh, items that you want to you want you want to select for, and sometimes it's quite a long list, and that gets quite messy if you're using ands and ors. You can just do this dollar uh, uh, percentage in percentage, and then concatenation, and then put your list in there. And what this means is it's gonna it's going to select any row that meets either of these criteria, and you can put more. I've just put two, but you can put a whole lot there. So if a row fulfills the criteria of having human in, in the kind, you know, or the spe what was the species variable, or droid, it will be included in the data set. So if we run that, you can see that's exactly what's happened. So we've got mm -hmm. name, kind, and only humans and droids. The, the rows that include that, that meet that criteria have been included and no other rows. So that's my little tip for the day. I find particularly this one, this 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 percentage in percentage and then a concatenation with your list inside there. I find that super useful. I use it all the time. That's really great, Greg. I um, one thing that I notice here that is I think really nice about R is that um, you've immediately used this new variable name kind in your second command, and so R is just sort of reading like a human being going from line to line and it knows you've created this variable called kind or changed its name and then just immediately lets you use it you don't have to uh execute the command the um the full command before it, it recognizes it. that's that's a, a a way in which the the language is gentle to you and i appreciate that it's really nice and what i find by because of exactly that fact because you can kind of do something and then just go into the next line and, and what you've just done applies you can get quite a lot done without creating too many objects, 
Yeah. In other words, you don't need to create a new object that has that change and then use that object in the next line of code. And then, you know, you, you can you can get away with kind of having quite a lot of code, not too many, because I find if you create too many objects, your environment really gets messy. Yeah, and I start to get, I start to confuse myself. Yeah, yeah. So this is lovely. I mean, I so actually, I'm very, you told me before we started this video, what you were going to teach us today. And it's something yeah. that I desperately want to know more about. So I'm quite excited about yeah. learning what you've got to share. Okay, and I'm going to push stop share here and it's over to Great. you. All right, and see my R studio. I don't have the dark theme on here. Um, so this is an actual data set that I ran into just in the wild in some of my work earlier this week. Um, some practitioners were out in the field collecting floristic quality data. And um, on a certain date, they went to a few different locations. These are transects, which is a way of collecting data in a ravine, a prairie, a, um, a wetland restoration. And um, they looked at a bunch of different species and collected some quantitative data on the species they found. Um, the person that input this data, however, just put the plot number and the GPS coordinates and the transect name once, and then just left a bunch of white space as they put in all the different species they found which I think from the data entry perspective makes a lot of sense. But now as a data analyst, I might wanna do a plot where I have this categorical variable, transect name for instance, and it's just full of NAs and I don't really want that. So it's not too bad to go through in Excel and just use a pull down to do that the one variable at a time. In R you can actually do it all at once. And so that's what I wanna to show today. And I'm gonna use the fill command. Let me reorganize my windows a little bit here so we can see this. I want the one in the tidier package. And this is just going to fill missing values sort of from the top down by default. Um, you can specify other ways of filling as well, but top down is pretty much always the way you want to do it. So let's take this, uh, this data set, LFC, FQA, LFC for Lake Forest College, where I teach, and FQA for Floristic Quality Assessment. This triangle shape is the pipe that I'm using. It works just exactly like that parent, uh, percentage greater than percentage that you are using, Greg. Yeah, it's just neater. I like, I like your yeah, I like you know? new, the new pipe. It's, it's lovely. Um, and so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to specify the names of the variables that I want to fill. And to start, I'll just do one. Let's just do plot number, plot underscore number. And um, you know what? I'm going to save this as uh, LFC. How about filled? And just to make it a little bit neater, I'll do it like this. Let's take a look at that. And maybe I'll view this. And you can see that plot number 1A got filled all the way down until there was another um, cell that actually had a value, 1B, and then so on on down. So um, I was going to ask you that very question. I was going to say it's going to pull one A down, but what happens when it hits another value? Exactly. And it, it seems to just know if it's hit another value, then from that value onwards, it fills that value down. Yeah. So it is um, filling in all the NAs until it finds one that is not NA. Right. And um, in this help file, you can see that if you want to fill from the bottom up, which I can't really imagine why you would want to, but if you wanted to, <laughs> you can, if you you want can to, add yeah. the dot direction argument. Okay. Change that. I've I've never needed to do that, or I don't think I would ever need to do it. Yeah, I agree. The, um, the other thing that I will show is that um, where I've specified this column name, you can actually use the tidy select syntax and just name as many columns as you want. So here, I'm actually going to want to fill what the first five row, five columns. And so instead of saying plot number, I'll just say columns one to five. Oh, nice. And, and then that's going to do all five uh, of them just in the way you want. Absolutely so beautiful. the GPS latitude and longitude got filled, the transect name, the dates, everything. And you can see that they all filled in the sensible way. So plot number changed from 1A to 1B where you would hope. And transect name just kept going. Because if you remember. As it should do. Yeah. As yeah, it should do. yeah. Yeah. And this is a the kind of behavior you like to see from our where it has sensible defaults and it knows generally what people want when they're looking at actual data sets. And uh, Andrew, if you didn't put uh, the, the one to five and you actually yeah. typed in the names of the variables, would that still work? It absolutely would. When you're using the select command in R, 
as you were a little bit everything ago. Everything that you would lots- do in select, you can do with the fill. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. One one thing about the tidyverse is that the the syntax of the select command is used in a lot of different places. When yeah. whenever you need to specify column names, you can use that same syntax, um, not just in the select command. And this is a really good example of that. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, that's excellent. Well, I've learned something that I didn't know before, so I'm excited about that. I'm sure I'm going to find that useful going forwards. Um, Me too, Greg. Thanks a lot.